Ohio State Pro Day is in the books. It's not as eventful as it was last year with C.J. Stroud throwing. Or the year before. Or the year before. It's not as eventful as the one next year will be with all of the Buckeyes who decided to return. But it's still a pro day. NFL scouts littered across the Woody Hens Athletic Center as nine prospective Buckeyes work out. That's Tim made a 40-year, 41-year vet. That's Andy Backstrom and me, Spencer Holbrook, but you already know that. Ohio State Pro Day is now in the books. Tim, what'd you learn? I learned that Will Howard and Devin Brown are uh, competing mightily for that number one starting job for Ohio State at quarterback because they, they got the throw today. I think that's why 90% of the people in the media showed up was to watch that yeah. quote competition. Like Will Howard uh, told us afterwards, uh, I'll write a little story about it, we'll have a little video, but uh, uh, told us afterwards, uh, you know, everybody's going to go home from this. You know, I'm just paraphrasing him going, well, it looks like so-and-so is leading the competition. Yeah. You know, when in fact this was just throwing with your, your buddies, your new buddies in, 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 uh, in regards to Will Howard. Uh, but uh, both those guys look pretty good, you know, uh, throwing the football. So, number one, for Ohio State fans, that's what stood out. Number two, Mike Hall is going to be a pretty high draft pick, I do believe. That's what jumps out at me, the defensive tackle who's opted to leave. Like he and I were talking about, he's really – physically a bigger version of Aaron Donald. Uh, I'm not comparing him to Aaron Donald by any stretch. He just retired. But uh, his quicks he's shown, he was he created a buzz at the Senior Bowl. He created a buzz again here today. Just uh, a guy that big moving that quickly. And uh, like he said, he's only gotten better from the get-off standpoint and things like that. But uh, those are two things. And we all know Kate Stover's going to get drafted mm -hmm. pretty decently. I'll let y'all name some other guys. but. Uh, I enjoy talking to Kate Stover again because he's just pretty much just down to earth, you know, yeah. down to earth, uh, straight to the straight to the point about things he's doing well and and uh, so those are some of the things that jumped out. But yeah, definitely the Will Howard, uh, Devin Brown, uh, throwing competition was fun to watch. Yeah. By the way, Mike Hall said that he ran in the four sevens. At least yeah. he thinks some from what he's been told, or... right? Which would be one of the fastest times at the combine this year. He did not run at the combine. Got to participate that here and well, had a great. Interrupt. The reason he didn't run at the combine was one of the ladies there. You were standing there when he was talking about it because I asked him. Uh, one of the, the he called him a lady, a female trainer, wrapped his foot too tight mm -hmm. and he caused him some problems where he had to kind of ba basically bow out. So you never know what's going to get you in this game. Right, but a great senior bowl week yeah. overall. Uh, did his interviews at the combine and was able to kind of show out here and participate in the drilling at pro day. He also was joined alongside with Jack Sawyer and JT Tuimolua, which was cool to see. We didn't really expect to see that. And we obviously talked about Devin Brown and Will Howard participating as guys that are still gonna be on the 2024 team. But those are two guys who could be at the core of that maybe historically great defense, potentially. And they were out here getting some reps in. And Michael said that helped just to have his guys there with him. Sure. And it also helps JT and Jack get some practice for next year. We saw the Marvin Harrison Jr. last year who was catching passes for CJ Stroud. Marvin Harrison Jr. did not workout today, at least in our viewing period uh, for Pro Day. He's already got all of his tape that he needs, so that part of the show did not happen. But I thought that was cool to see Jack Sawyer and JT out here putting in some work. Yeah, and G. Scott, G. Scott Exactly, Jr. yep. I mean, I thought he looked good uh, running routes and stuff mm -hmm. and catching balls. Some of the passes weren't on target necessarily. Uh, uh, like I said, you know, like Will Howard's even commented, you know, it's you're still catching up with some of these guys, you know, in terms of uh, what they're all about. And we'll get into that later. but. Uh, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but uh, G. Scott Jr. I thought looked pretty good. Yeah, I, I thought he looks that, more like a tight end. Don't you agree? Yeah, he, he does. Did three he years does. ago, he looks bigger. I thought the day, for the most part, was about the guys who didn't get to go to the combine, um, because you know Mike Hall obviously needed to work out to show that he can do things. He wasn't able to work out, like you said, at the combine. But yeah. he he was afforded the opportunity to go, and I thought it was an absolute travesty that. Xavier Johnson wasn't invited to the combine. I looked through the combine, and, like, I don't have anything against some of those guys who were at the combine. But, like, do we need a Northern Iowa wide receiver over Xavier freaking Johnson? Yeah. No. So Xavier should have been at the combine. And yeah. I think he would have performed well and put himself on the map to at least sixth or seventh round flyer. Now I don't think he's going to get drafted, to be honest, just because the combine, there's just more people there. There were no head coaches here. There were no GMs here. There were scouts from every, every team. But, like, the fact that Marvin didn't work out kind of made took the, the pop out of this thing. And so for Xavier to be able to perform the way he did, I thought he looked really good and fluid. Yeah. The other guy that I thought looked good is Ohio wide receiver Sam Wiggles, who started his career here, and it's why he worked out here. Yeah. Because he earned the, the right to work out here after doing it for four years here and showing everybody what he could do and then going down to Athens and playing for two years and, and having 1,000 yards in the MAC. Like, those two guys in particular, they didn't get to go to the combine, and they probably 
you could make the argument both of those guys deserved an invite to the combine. You know, yeah. X was uh, one of the top playmakers on the Ohio State offense, and Sam was one of the best wide receivers in the conference that produces good wide receivers every year. So, those but you know how you get invited to the combine is teams basically say who they kind of want to see. And those two, and, but, and you know, if, for whatever reason, Xavier Johnson, a jack of all trades, if, if there's ever been one in Ohio State football history, uh, you know, didn't get didn't get an invite. I agree with you. It was a travesty. So I thought that it was really important for those two guys to be able to show what they can do, and I'm glad that they performed well because now they should be on radars across the league of like, hey, if we have a seventh round pick, like that's a guy that we could highlight. And he could really be a special teams playmaker for us. He's got the speed. He's got the agility. He's got what we need. If, if we're in a pinch on the 53, he can play wide receiver for us. Like those are the kind of guys who stick, and they help you win, you know, win Super Bowls. To be honest. Yeah. And so you know, you look at a guy like Nate Ebner. Like he helped the Patriots win Super Bowls. So like, I, you know, Xavier Johnson and Sam Wiggles, it was just awesome. I thought it, it, for a pro day that lacked the pop, it was really cool, and it's cool for me to be able to highlight them. Like. They deserve today, and they deserve to be able to show that they that they can play at the NFL level. Yeah, and Xavier Johnson, even though he didn't go to the combine, his tape is out there, and so is Marvin Harrison Jr.'s, by the way. And every team that's watching Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to see Xavier Johnson. So those teams at yeah. the top of the draft, maybe they're going to spot him and say, hey, maybe we take a late round flyer on him. Maybe we give him an undrafted free agent contract. Maybe we yeah. bring him to camp. So there's totally possibilities there with his tape that's going to be seen by virtue of other teams looking sure. at Ohio State. Kate Stover is another guy on offense. You know, any of those players that teams are looking at, they're also going to see Xavier because he played at all these different positions. Yeah. And I was talking to his parents, and you know, I asked him about that combine invite not being received. And he said, you know, uh, Jeff, his father, said, you know, he wasn't we, – we thought when we gave him a call maybe he would be a little bit down or whatever, and he didn't blink. He just kept going, and I think that kind of is a testament to the adversity he's kind of worked through. Uh, Mai Williams is another guy we talked to, and – you know, he didn't participate in the drilling today, but he also he did lift, and he's recovering from a knee injury. Uh, same kind of story at the combine, but he got to do his interviews and everything like that. I asked him when he kind of knew that he was going to, you know, turn the page and, and go to the NFL level after, you know, his career here at Ohio State. And he said it was really after that knee injury and the surgery and kind of thinking about what he wanted to do next long term. And he just felt like it was time uh, to go to the NFL. So he yeah. feels like once he got a foot in the door, he's good. So all he needs is an opportunity. And a guy that uh, he was my breakout player of the year five years in a row, as I told him, uh, Josh Proctor, I thought looked pretty good today in <laughs> drills, et cetera. I know, he, I mean, <laughs> and like I was telling him, I said, this was supposed to have happened three years ago, right? And he started laughing. But, you know, we all thought he was like three and flea, you know, a three and flea kind of player when he showed up at Ohio State the last, what was the last decade? Yeah. <laughs> so long ago. Uh, I thought he looked good in his drills today. He's he's got size to him. He's got height to him. Uh, he, he's kind of like a guy they're looking for. Uh, they did a lot of you know. He's heard a lot of talk about him being able to roll down, cover uh, an extra wide receiver, things mm -hmm. like that. I mean, he's going to get drafted. You know, it's just he, an interesting. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see when, when, and where, and by whom. There were some high-ranking people in high places of the NFL media who noted him as one of like the the winners of those safety workouts at the combine. I don't think he did anything today that would hinder him. I don't know if he did anything that's going to boost him up. I think he's kind of at his NFL draft ceiling, if you will, probably in that fourth, fifth, sixth round range. Mm -hmm. But like, sometimes that's just what you are as like a pro he prospect. Said he wants a shot. That's all yeah, he wants. Is but a shot. sometimes that's what you are as a pro prospect. And so he's going to get that shot. He's going to get drafted. And I thought today the only thing he could do was either work out well or hurt himself as far as the draft process. I don't think he hurt himself, and I think that's a good sign for him moving forward. Like, he's not going to boost himself anymore. I yeah. think he, you know, you are what you are to a certain point when you're in that range. But like, he didn't hurt himself, and I think that's a good thing. And he did look good. He looked fluid. He looked strong. Um, he's always going to test well in the weight room. He's been a weight room freak for six years here. It's like it's not a surprise to see Josh Proctor do well. And you know, I, it, Andy, anyone else that that kind of just. You know, you watched all the 40 times. You, you watched a lot of this stuff pretty closely. Like, anybody else that just popped for you? Well, uh, I don't know if pop is the right word, but Bradley Robinson was back out here again. <laughs> uh, okay. Long yeah. snapper for there we go. quite a long time at Ohio State and trying to get an opportunity, right? And that's hard as a specialist. There's really only one of those for every team. So mm -hmm. he was back out here. Uh, you know, Matthew Jones, I don't think he went through a lot of the workout stuff today, but he was around, and mm -hmm. he's someone that's trying to get a shot and has quite a bit of versatility. And I think that even though – 
it didn't go super well in the Cotton Bowl. It's probably good to have some tape of playing center as well alongside his time at guard. Yeah, I thought he looked um, physically, he looked pretty good. So Yeah, so those are just a few other guys that kind of come to mind. But yes, you're right. The Will Howard, Devin Brown component of this added this wrinkle that I think everyone was itching to get to see. Cause what, might as well be honest I about mean, it. Yeah, we all you know, want to see them throw the ball, whether it's routes on the air. And, I mean, pads are on now. We haven't seen any of that yet. Yeah. So this was an extended look at them throwing. I don't, I don't think that it's really fair to say one was better than the other. I actually didn't even see a negligible real difference between the two. Some, sometimes, you know, they both missed a throw here and there. Other times I thought they both looked really sharp. Yeah. Um, and that's just going to be the way it is. You're yeah. also working with guys that aren't going to be on your team besides G. Scott. So that's a whole other component with chemistry. Yeah, it was, it was interesting though too because uh, that's what I was talking to uh, Will about was you know a lot of video floated after those first two open practices. The first 30 minutes we got the video before we got out of here and uh, and he says he Will says he's not really paying attention to social media and stuff, but uh, those weren't his sharpest moments. You know, especially the second the second time because it's it's almost like you're uh, you're uh, you're you're not throwing to strangers, but you're you're still trying to find your niche, you know, with these guys from a timing standpoint and stuff. And you know he's going to be better at the end of the spring than he is now. So yeah. uh, it'll, it's going to be an interesting competition, I'm telling you. Last thing here, I thought it was more today apparent, even more apparent today maybe than ever, that this roster is just so loaded. Like this Ohio State roster is, is, is very, very talented, and it showed itself today because there was just a lack of energy in here from, uh, you know, there's not as many head coaches here. There's not as many pro scouts here. Why is that? Because they're all going to be in the press box on Saturdays this fall to watch the, you know, loads of Buckeyes who are ready to take that step next year. Speaking of that, though, you know the guy that really popped to me and uh, uh, just because, number one, you weren't, I didn't know if he was going to be working at it or not, it was Jack Sawyer looks like a different guy than he did three years ago. Yeah. I mean, he looks fierce. He looks robust. He moves. Ex <coughs> I'm talking about he, he just is a big dude coming at you very fast. Some of those drills he ran with JT Tui Molowau and Mike Hall, uh, Mike Hall Jr. Uh, I, I, there was a guy that's really caught my eye over the last, at the end of the year last year and then in spring practice so far. And of course, I got a little piece I'm going to write about him lobbying to possibly play a little bit of offense this year. But uh, Jack Sawyer really jumped out at me today. Yeah, he's been impressive throughout this offseason, both on and off the field. Um, we're going to see him on the field a little bit on Thursday. We'll full coverage of it at LettermanRoad.com. We're going to be right back in this building in about, uh, we'll call it 18 hours, maybe a little bit few, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit yeah, less. Your cot is still, you didn't make up your cot yeah. this morning. <laughs> yeah, I forgot to make my bed, but I'll go do that right now over here in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. The 41-year vet, Tim Bay, he'll be here tomorrow. Andy Backstrom, he will as well. And me, Spencer Holbrook. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. As we wrap up Ohio State Pro Day here in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center, we'll be back in the building tomorrow. We'll talk to you then.